second. <coughs> Here we go. All right, Corley Moore Firehouse Vigilance Weekly Scrap number 49. I am super excited because today my guest is Jason Patton, the face that brings the funny to Fire Department Chronicles. He's a comedian, actor. His antics hit home with so many because most importantly, he is a firefighter and medic, which keeps it very real. Outspoken mental health and addiction advocate, nationally sought after speaker, I would be remiss if I did not mention that he is an avid fan of coffee, especially fire department coffee. Brother, it is my pleasure to have you as the guest on Weekly Scrap, number 49. Welcome to the show. What's up, brother? I appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and you're 100% right. Coffee is, uh, I mean, it's obviously the thing that runs through all of our blood at some point in time. You know, if it's not coffee, it's some sort of caffeinated liquid. Some so we definitely love it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Absolutely. To everyone watching live, if you have questions for Jason or myself or comments, please throw them at us and I will read them and make uh, we will we will answer them as best as possible. Uh, please don't hesitate to send them. Uh, Jason, did I miss anything in the intro that you'd like to add? No, man, that's uh, that's that's one of the uh, 75 things that I have going on. You know, just 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 throwing stuff in there at all times, man. Perfect. Well, then I'm going uh, <laughs> to start right at the beginning and say I want to start with young Jason because I kind of everybody knows your face. There's no doubt about that. I just want to start and take us down the road of what has made you you. Were you a class clown? Were you the youngest of 13, et cetera? Like what has made you you? Go for it. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Uh, so young me, uh, I, uh, I'm actually the oldest of three. Both my uh, <clears throat> my younger brothers, they're both equally as funny in my mind. I, I think, uh, you know, we have a like – a specific type of humor that thank God other people find funny. It's, I think it tends to, it's like some weird combination of slapstick and dry humor. Like you can't, like it's just somewhere in there. Um, oh, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, I grew up in uh, South Florida, man. I, uh, I definitely always been the class clown in some way, shape or form. And the, the funny, the funniest part about all that stuff is, you know, I've always been the class clown and um, a, a, a friend of mine about 10 years ago came up to me and she's like, you know, one of the one of the greatest things you ever said to me was, you know, people can't make fun of you if you make fun of yourself first. Nice. And I was like, oh, what? And, and she said, like, I, I apparently at one point in my life, I said that to her and I never remember saying that. So I was like, man, that's it's so true because, you know, you go through school and, you know, people Absolutely. make fun of each other. Yeah, people make fun of each other. And at least with firefighting, that's one of the things that I think makes it amazing when you walk to a station someone makes fun of you you know it's you know it's all lighthearted, that kind of thing when you're going through school a, a lot of people they're you're developing they're starting to get their self-esteem or, sure. or lack of self-esteem so on and so forth so for me it was one of those things like hey i'm gonna be the funny guy dude like i'll be the funny guy let's have a good time you know that kind of thing and, and thankfully a lot of people uh, caught on and they enjoyed it kind of thing and unbeknownst to you it was a mantra or motto of life that has worked out well for you even though you're yeah. passing out that wisdom <laughs> but you know what man it's it's uh people always say like well what do you what do you get the videos from like what are your thoughts like how do you come up with these ideas right. no absolutely like 90 yeah 99 percent of the people that i'm making fun of are me like I, i've been that <laughs> that guy that's like the load and go medic like i open up the door like you ready to go I'll be like yeah just give me a pfft, like let's go and then i'm we're, we're driving like you know mm -hmm. like I, i've been all of those people i've been the new driver i've been uh i can make it you know it'll fit you know that kind of thing and i've taken off a door in, in my lifetime <laughs> at some point in time driving. I mean, I don't know if that's just me, but you know, like I've been all of these things at some point in time. And, and the greatest thing you can do is make fun of yourself and, and enjoy it. Cause look, we all screw up. We all have a good time. I think the baseline of firefighting sites, brotherhood obviously is, is truly attempting to remain humble, even though it's difficult sometimes, but attempting to remain humble and, you know, just, just enjoy life. Cause man, we all know it's short, you know? No, absolutely. And brother, it's fun yeah. just while talking to you because when you see you on a recorded video, of course, you're animated, you are expressive, <laughs> you are exaggerative. But to yeah. see you live and see, holy crap, this is just who this guy is. He's not, this, yeah. is, this is not an act. No, so, no, not I, at all. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's funny to see. Now, I went, <laughs> I went digging through the YouTube channel and I, uh, the oldest video I could find, I don't know, it's the oldest one I could find was National Geographic's mm -hmm. Fire Department Chronicles, No Running on the Fire Ground. So was yeah. that was that the original or was there others or how, there was back. there was probably about six prior or, or four prior to that we did uh, you know no running on the fire grounds and then um, the the original the OG the first one that started everything was uh, 
National Geographic's Fire Department Edition, Hunting for the Battalion Chief, right? Okay. And, and the, <laughs> yo, what I loved about this is like, I had this horrible Australian accent. And at one point in time, I put a video up and like people from Australia were like, that's not Australian. We're not claiming <laughs> We don't him. know what then, that is. <laughs> yeah, the people, they were like, there must be South African. And then South African people were going and going, no, that's definitely not South African. No one can figure out where my accent was from. And I got to think, and I carried the accent, dude. I never changed, like I wouldn't change it when I was on live videos. I wouldn't change it when I did anything. I always kept it just to see. But And when I would meet people, they were like, wait, where, where's your accent, dude? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's a whole, like, it's fake. And I had one guy, I swear to God, he goes, motherfucker. And then just walks away. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's it? Like, there's, there's an avenue that's fake. So, um, yeah, the, the OG was the battalion chief. And then the running on the firegrounds actually came from a live video we were on a, um, right. a cruise ship. We're on a cruise ship, dude, doing a walkthrough. We're on the front of the cruise ship, the farthest point you can get from the exit. I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise ship, but those things are mazes, right. bro. So uh, we're on the front of the cruise ship. One of the guys goes, is that is that house on fire? And two seconds later, we get toned out for a structure fire, bro. Nice. So we were running out of this thing. <laughs> Everyone goes around this concrete barrier. The one, our, our shortest firefighter, uh, the vertically challenged one, right? It. Yeah, vert yeah, vertically <laughs> challenged. God tries to hurdle it, doesn't hurdle it, and just like almost face plants. It was hysterical. So, um, but uh, no, yeah, the National Geographic's that was fun, man. We got a, a lovely cease and desist from the National Geographic's at some point in time. They were really cool about the whole thing, so I was super impressed with them. But uh, yeah, man, th those are the those are the old ones, bro. Not a lot of people know about that. I had to dig. I had to dig. I do my research here on the scrap. This is high quality. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, uh, the Geographic's with the X. I like that, too. That, so. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a suggestion from one of the guys. He's like, I wouldn't put the actual spelling. You should right. change it up. And when I spoke with National Geographic's, they were very, they, they were like, yeah. Parody law. Good job. I'm like, uh, I'm changing the name. <laughs> so, <Fair. yeah. laughs> they seem like they were cool about it. Uh, yeah. Through the years, your production value and, of course, comfort has climbed. As you watch the older ones and the newer ones, you're, both of those mm. have climbed through. How many people work on your videos? What uh, is it all just you? Is there a team? Uh, just go ahead. and. 99% of the time, it's just me. It's just me. I've uh, it's, I got an iPhone, a cool editing software program on my phone. Um, and then uh, most of the time I'm filming about myself. Larger production videos, pretty much anything I do with Fire Department Coffee has a has some kind of production team involved with it. Just because you, you can't, you know, when you're shooting really large videos, sure. you, you, you got to make sure that they're that they're done properly, that kind of thing, sound text, you know, so on and so forth. But most of the time it is just me. We got, I got a guy that works, uh, Fritzel media is the name of it. He does an amazing job. He's, uh, shoots, he's got, uh, some cameras called phantom cameras. Uh, we're actually going to shoot a video in two weeks up in Illinois. It's going to be a blast, but one of his uh, videos can shoot, I think it's 1.2 million frames per second. Oh. So like, yeah, you can tell we're gonna be doing some cool stuff. You're gonna do some ultra slow mo stuff type thing, or what? Yeah, okay. just it's literally just gonna be me urinating. That's it. It's just gonna be <laughs> just on repeat. And just, yeah, Watch just like the what splatter. is happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what is that? Those, uh, uh, extremely uh, satisfying videos. With that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, it's just gonna be why you should actually clean the urinals every morning because it's just gonna oh, show splatter. Gosh, just, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I like that. <laughs> Oh, God, that would be bad. <laughs> All right. So have you had a favorite skit video you have done, one that is near and dear to your heart or just makes you laugh every time it, like, hit me? Yeah. No. Um, I, I, like The rebuttal videos have been really fun lately. And then um, – but probably um, – it's you know, top ten or top, top two or three would be – um, what would happen if paramedics had to try all their medications before they, before they could, uh, actually, uh, right. use them like that one was like, just so funny to me, man. Uh, and that came from, if you go to a lot of departments when they, the, for a while, they use nitrous oxide. They, it's like some departments utilize nitrous oxide on the trucks. My department was one of them, Really, but the problem, yeah. But the problem was, was they were like. You're going through two bottles of nitrous oxide a month. What are you doing? Like, and we're like, well, we got to test it every morning, man. We got to make sure it's working. <laughs> Everything's you know? funny. So, yeah, exactly. So this is prior to me even getting hired. But um, yeah, I love that one. 
I love uh, you know living with the first responder. That one's that one's probably uh, one of my one of my more favorite ones. And then you know definitely the rebuttal ones lately. I've I've really really enjoyed them. I've had a good time with them. Awesome. The yeah. uh, how about ideas that have completely flopped? Uh, I've had I, multiple of those. Many. <laughs> never many seen the light of day. Uh, no, you know, there's only one video that never saw the light of day. Um, but it, it, like every other video, and that's something I, I try to tell people if they're putting content out there, like just put it out. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes you put it out there and it's like, it's not the best stuff in the world, but you know, you, you a got to put it out there because good co or content is good content at all times, as long as it's not something that's going to get you fired. Um, and you never know where some of these videos are going to go. We did a video for Fire Department Coffee. It was all all shot in California. It was all dirt bikes, really, really high, you know, cool high production stuff. We spent probably uh, about seven thousand dollars on this video. Like we we spent a good chunk on it, and the video flopped. It was <laughs> not good. Like it, it ended up not being what we wanted it to be. Right. But what but what happened was these guys are people that are um uh steve a. Miocic, his managers saw the video and they saw the video they're like this is really cool high production stuff and we ended up working with steve a. Miocic. so like it's you know one of those like ah uh, it's a flop right. but was it a flop it actually worked out um but the only video that i've ever created that never saw the light on any platform was uh, I did a likes and prayers video um, about how like people, whenever something happens, sure. instead of you know going to the doctor or something, they ask for likes and prayers. And I was getting ready to put it out, sent it to my my buddy Luke, the CEO of Fire Department Coffee. I was like, I'm gonna put this out. I think it's funny. And he goes, So yeah, that might not go. <laughs> you might piss off a lot of people. Here's the deal, I right? Like, <laughs> I was like, All right, fine. So I just never released it, man. So that one, will you will you ever release it? Or is it better just locked away? It's just locked away. It's you know what? If it if it was one of those videos that I watched and I was like, this is the funniest video I've ever right. made, then I might put it out. But it was like, this is entertaining, but not worth you know. Right. The, no, in the, the back of your head, stuff. that's why yeah. you asked your buddy. In the back of your head, you're like, do I want to do this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's and I've always I've said that to so many people when they're like, do you have any social media advice? I'm like, before you put a video out, if there's a thought in your head, like, should I? out you probably shouldn't put it right out on, right <laughs> don't on. do so, it <laughs> that's what i was going to ask how how uh what's your i mean i know everybody asks you your process but just kind of just is it just strictly do people send you ideas do you run with the uh, suggestions uh, i've had i've had all the above man i i've i'll run with suggestions people will send me stuff and a lot of times they'll send me an idea and it's got a really cool concept and then i'll just work it massage it a little bit and then you know maybe turn it into a video um but uh, I got like, I didn't trim, I haven't trimmed my nose hairs, dude. So there's like one, I don't know if you go through this, but like there's one and it just, just sitting there. So I'm constantly messing with it. But um, this is the ADD, the squirrel that runs around in my head right, all day long. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to follow, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, they'll send me the ideas, you know, and, and I'll massage and work with them if I can. Uh, but, you know, uh, the Wall Street Journal thing, I never saw that Wall Street Journal video. Somebody Snapchatted it to me. Yo, right. You should check this out and see what these people are saying. And I'm like, huh, that's really interesting. I actually just came across a new one. Um, a guy that wrote five reasons why EMS don't uh, EMS personnel don't deserve the pay that they get. I'm like, oh, really? all right. And this guy is a, he, this guy's in, he's in a paramedic. So he's cannibalizing his own people. Sure, sure. So we're going to have a fun, we're going to have some fun. So with that one's in the work. <laughs> yeah, that's going to, yeah, absolutely. How long absolutely. does it take you? I, Cause I mean, I love it, man. You play all the parts. So even when you're having a conversation, yeah. I, I love uh, that, man. So you were kind of ahead, ahead of the, uh, I don't know what the TikTok game of, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And, yeah, 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 yeah. uh, how long does it take you to make one of your typical, it depends the, um, <laughs> the rebuttal videos, the rebuttal videos or that, like when I, review uh, movies or, or shows or something like that some of those will take <clears throat> like three or four days sure because because you know i need to find the content i need to search through it i need to watch all the episodes and see like what's you know trust me like <laughs> sorry you reminded me of some uh, of the ones i watched yesterday i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> reviewing your 911 and their traumas and sorry. oh my god those are just <laughs> like I, I get it it's entered you know what the worst part is dude so I go through the 911 videos, right? And I'm making fun of their treatment. And I'm like, this is just atrocious. Like, what are you doing? Like one of them where she sticks her hand inside the guy's chest to hold his aorta. Like, yeah, you're going to jail. That's called murder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, 
But I watched this and I see a comment one day and they're like, hey, 911 was actually created to pay to pay better homage to first responders than Station 19. And I was like, what are you talking about? I watched Station 19. That is the worst show I've ever seen. All it is, I've learned that if that's the way you're supposed to be as a firefighter, right. I'm not having anywhere near enough sex inside of the stations. Like, <laughs> that's the entire thing. It's just one that's giant the orgy. I, I swear to God, that's the entire premise. I'm three episodes in going, everyone's having sex with each other in the station. What is happening right now? <laughs> so bad, man. So bad. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it depends. Uh, the videos, some of the videos where it's like all the reactions, uh, uh, you know, things EMTs say, things paramedics say, stuff like that. Those probably take me about four or five hours to make. Not, not a big deal. But any of the reaction videos, it's two or three days because once I – find the stuff i cut it up then i react to it then i have to take another day or so and put on any of the additional layers i want to put on top of their videos or uh, other you know pictures and stuff like that so is it scripted at all or are you strictly just your adhd running wild <laughs> exactly the way this conversation's going that's right? exactly the way it goes uh, <laughs> Fair enough. But, yeah it's uh, i wish i could show like what my for for that three minute video the the 30 minutes or hours of me like reacting because what i'll do is i'll say something i'll i'll, I'll you know i'll have a a uh, planned response or or how i want to react to sure. it and then i'll start layering it adding stuff i'll say something like oh this would sound better and then so on and so <laughs> forth that's, but, what I, yeah, that's, that's the next thing i was gonna ask is there ever going to be outtakes just a strictly outtakes video uh, uh, it would just it's just be me screaming the f word that's okay. that's it like I guess I can, <laughs> i'll start re- i'm like yeah i'm on i'm on i'm on i'm on and i'll miss me i'm like god ah! it's <laughs> just screaming at the top of my lungs dude so, right on yeah perfect uh now recently and they, we've, you've already touched on this but you started doing the rebuttal videos i think there's been three it may be more but i believe three uh, and yeah. i love them man this this is this is humor uh, you know, the court jester in the, is the only one that could make fun of the king back in the day. And I love the yeah. fact how you come at him uh, and using uh, – uh, it reminds me of – I don't know if you watch Joe Rogan or listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, mm-hmm. but he is so good at, uh, like, attacking a guest but not even attacking. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Strictly, he is – and that's kind of what these remind me of is it's so powerful in how they uh, – is that just something you just thought of? Where did it come from or – no, dude. The first one that I did because I was doing all the nine one one reviews, and then someone sent me that that uh, Wall Street Journal video, and I looked, and I was like, "Man, this is so. It's just so off base." And if they say things that I'm like, "All right, I get where you're coming from," but you, none of that makes sense. Like, you can't. That's not the way you 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 know describe a firefighter. You describe the way things are. So I want to be able to. And exactly, I like the way you described it because that's, that's how I always try to portray this. Like, I want to educate you, but I don't want to, like, punch you in the face. Like, right. I'm not going to make fun of you for who you are. You know, like, I mean, that's just – I just don't think that that's the way that I, – I've learned through my 37 years of life and my 14 years in, in uh, being a firefighter or a paramedic that if you insult somebody, that the conversation's over. Right. Like, you, you're no longer <laughs> – like, thanks for playing. Like, listen, you fat piece of crap. Like, all right, well, that, thanks for coming. You know, yeah. like – it, it's 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 never it's never a good idea. And plus, you can probably educate people in a more open minded setting, kind sure. of thing. So, um, but uh, no, I I enjoy doing it, man. I I think it's a great way, and I think it's a good way for people to maybe get a little more education on what you know, like the the YouTube guy, which I don't, I still can't figure out why he made that video. Make it fun. I like. I was like, what's, he's going what's for, wrong he, with you? He's going for clicks. <laughs> he he's strictly yeah. going for clicks. It was just so funny the way he's like, yeah, fires are uh, declining and then does no other research on anything else. Like, I mean, like calls have literally tripled and has not responses or worse. Fires are burning eight times faster. Like they're every reason justification that, that no, doesn't exist. None of like, that matters. Nah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, it's perfect rebuttal, man. Mm, I appreciate uh, it, man. And, and the, uh, the New York City. I love that one, too. So, uh, of course. Uh, that was probably the only video that I that I did as I was taping it. I actually started off at a higher, uh, like I was like my normal, like really like reactive. And I was like, I got to be very careful about the way I explain this because I don't want to come off as insensitive, you know. Yeah. So I wanted to like educate. This is why we do things, you know. And and then you know, but we're we're but the fact that those guys, those dude, those guys did an incredible job. Like, I don't think anyone can really truly process right. the small, the small hallways they had to go through. Then they actually had to breach a wall. Like what? Like yeah. they did, they did such a good job. It was so impressive. 
No, and I and that's what I, I don't know if it's just your natural uh, your natural gauge for acceptable, uh, unacceptable, uh, acceptable. <laughs> you know, and it, it comes through, man. It comes through, and so. that's four years of trying not to get fired. That's <laughs> that's what that is. Successful so far, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and that brings yeah. me to completely how you use humor as a weapon, or at least as a tool. And I think uh, the t- two of my favorites, man, it's you and Paul Combs. And I hope you take that mm-hmm. as a compliment because his drawings. Uh, cut right to the heart of it and your humor cuts right to the heart of it, man. And so, yeah. uh, at first, did you Paul, ever, did you plan to, to, to become a, uh, educational voice when you started or was it strictly just entertainment for yourself? It, all entertainment, man. That was, it was just entertainment. Let's enjoy it. Like, let's have a good time with this. Let's laugh at ourselves. You know, again, you know, people who enjoy, um, my, uh, one of my favorite guys out there right now is Ginger Billy. This guy's hysterical. I don't know if you watch him, man. He's a redneck. Like, he's really funny. What um, was the name? But Ginger Billy. Okay. He's got, a, like, he's got like two million, over 2 million followers on Facebook. But everything this dude puts out is so funny. And I enjoy it because it's redneck humor. And my, fam- my family's from Kentucky. And, and like, okay. I get a lot of that stuff. You know, maybe not as deep <laughs> as like some, some people there. But like, it's just his accent. So I can relate to some of that stuff. So, you know, there was no one really doing the firefighter humor, safe firefighter and paramedic humor. And I was like, let's let's do this, man, because we can all relate to it. Everything that I'm doing is most likely me at some point in time. I'm the reason that I'm making fun of it because I'm the one that did it kind of thing. (laughs) So, like, you know, I I wanted to do it. And then it obviously moved its way into mental health. And then it's just been it's just been this really, really cool journey. But I own a, a, a comedy CPR company. I teach people how to do CPR through stand up comedy. And that's where I learned that I could actually like I could give people educational points and teach them how to do things and remove the stress from the environment just by making it all funny. Oh, okay, so the the comedy CPR video that is the one that's bookmarked on your that's actually a company and you use that more than just a that's video. Act- yeah that's actually my that's like my uh, 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 three and a half minute version of my of what I do in an hour and a half when I teach people CPR and we laugh nice. and have a good time. Nice. Yeah. And, and dude, I can't. I, I can only imagine. I don't have to catch that CPR. That needs to be my CPR <laughs> refresher. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hannah yeah, Elliott has it. chimed in, and she always has the best questions. She says, "Have anyone, have any of your videos ever impacted someone in a positive manner besides just making them laugh? Like, have you gotten stories from people and things like that? Testimonials type." Actually, so the first, the first, um, the first time I ever learned that my videos were impacting people in a positive way and not just laughing was uh, probably about eight months or a year into me making the videos. And I was doing a lot of Snapchat stuff at the time. And I had a, um, a guy reach out to me and he goes, hey, man, uh, once you know, we went on this really bad call. It was like, you know, a bad accident, you sure. know, dead people, that kind of thing. Really, really bad. So to get back. And he and the boys are all sitting around and they're just like processing what just happened. One of the guys pulls up Snapchat and I'm on there doing something stupid. They all start laughing. They're ha, ah, this is really good. It breaks like kind of the, um, the stigma or, you know, the, the, the thickness darkness around yeah, the, the, what, yeah, the thickness, thickness. Yes, yes, exactly. And they're, and they start talking about what happened and they were able to process or work through sure. what, or at least start the conversation of what they just went through. So that was the first time, but at least, at least, um, you know, <coughs> once or twice a day, somebody's writing me, somebody's saying, Hey man, this video really helps me. I learned a lot from this video, you know, Narcan reactions, people, thank you. Uh, Narcan reactions. People love that one. The, the dude, <laughs> I'm, the EKG video I made. I don't know if you saw that one, but I did songs? one of EKG. Yeah, oh, like yes. what if EKG people? <laughs> that ended up on more channels or more like <laughs> classrooms than I could ever imagine. Right. Like everyone, I'm using this. I'm using like, dude, because you can teach people and have a really good time with it and let people actually enjoy it and learn something, and then you know, then they want to come back continuously. You know, if EKGs were songs. Mm. Yes, that was probably one of my one of my more favorite ones that I made, just because it was like. <laughs> was there so was there two? There was a volume two, wasn't there? First one, the second one. There was a volume yeah. two. There's a volume two. Uh, it it it's um it, I enjoyed it just as much. It didn't get as many shares, but I was like, whatever, man. But the funniest comment that I got on that verse video because it goes from like you know 
making my way downtown. And then it's all, all that all, uh, all that remains like this, like, ah! like screaming. Every <laughs> the com- one of the first comments was headphone warning. Headphone warning. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, it was. Is anyone else currently having a heart attack from from the SVT song? <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. That is awesome. Mm. Uh, we go to you are of course, and that that breaks me. I mean, we're these questions are falling right into each other, and you are a strong, a huge advocate for mental health and addiction, man. Uh, yeah, has it always been something you were strong about, or is that something that's come along in, in as you as you've aged or hit me? You you know I um I, I went through some I, you know even as a young child I I went through some struggles and stuff, and I always noticed that I obviously like most comedians use some of my humor to kind of cope for things that were going on in my life or issues that I had, that kind of thing. But then as I got a little um, older, I would go through times, you know, uh, where if I drank a little too much, I would go into kind of a depressive state. You know, not, I never had a drinking problem per se, but you know, if I just had a weekend where I party with the boys or something like that. Um, But I went through a rough part uh, of my life, probably about three years ago where I was legitimately suicidal. Like it was, it was, uh, went through the like six months of just constant reoccurring thoughts, like genuinely at one point in time thought about putting a gun in my mouth and, and killing myself and got relief from that thought. And I was like, you know, t- time to seek a little help. So um, went and got help, dude. And it's been incredible ever since. Like I, I did, you know, every, you know, the therapy sessions that I should have, and it helped me rectify some issues and I've, and I've been money since. So, you know, it's um, I, I'm always a big advocate for it because people somehow equate manliness with sure. not talking 100 percent. this job is, yeah. is is rife with it dude um 100 percent. now uh who are you uh, is there anything you want to say as far as uh i know i've seen the banyan i believe the institute or anything yeah. like that as far as who they can reach out to or things like that you want to suggest yeah uh banyan treatment centers uh <clears throat> google banyan treatment centers we have 12 wonderful facilities right now across the United States. And the, the reason that I work with these guys is not because they opened up a cool firefighter facility. Like, you know, that's great. I mean, there are some places that are, you walk in, there's a giant fire truck there and, you know, some guy spraying you with water, welcome to me, you in, you know, that kind of thing. But that's not what I wanted to be associated with. I wanted to be associated with people that looked at the whole picture because a lot of people that have problems develop these issues prior to even walking in the, uh, to becoming a first responder. In fact, they may become a first responder because they create some traumas or some traumatic issues or stuff happens, so on and so forth. Um, but then they walk into the door with an already jacked up loaded plate. Sure. So I want people to, you know, look at things a little bit differently. So, um, Benny treatment centers, what we did is we created the crew program. It's, uh, treatment modalities that, that are proven to help first responders but we're going to look at you as a human first and then figure out what you need to go from there. So, um, yeah, they can, uh, just Google banning treatment centers and you can, uh, you can look us up or the crew program and, and find us out. But, awesome. but if the, anyone needs to reach out to me, all they have to do is call DM me, uh, on any, anything message me, or they can email me up my emails on all my platforms. You email me, you need help. And, and I will make sure that you get the treatment that you need. Getting some sort of con dude, it's a powerful story. And you, Thank what, you. what's, 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 uh, really powerful about it is how frank and unapologetic or I, that's not even the right word, but just how in your yeah. face and saying, Hey, this is where I was. And this is where I went and got help. And it's okay as a first responder, as a manly man to, yeah. to, to not be okay. And, yeah, and that's, and that's what I've said to people. Like, like, how do you, you know, and, and it's always like, okay, well, how do you define manliness? How much weight can I lift? Well, I, I'm, I'm an Olympic level, uh, uh, Olympic lifter or national level Olympic lifter. Like I, I went to the na- nationals, like I qualified, I did good stuff. Like, oh, a career. I've had a solid career my entire life. Like what, like, where do you define manliness? So if, if I think I've hit all those things that define manliness and I'm still willing to talk about my feelings, like who cares? I'm not in a corner crying all the time. If you're crying six times a shift, you need medication or you need to go somewhere. Like, <laughs> let's figure, let, let's figure this out. <laughs> hopefully someone's picking up on it. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, the first thing is just admitting it is the greatest part about anything. The greatest part of, about any issues. It's always the same. People admit it and they're like, man, that call wasn't okay. And they're like, man, no one's going to agree with me. And then seven other guys walk up and go, you're totally right, yeah, bro. Like, 100%. man, I'm so glad you said something. <clears throat> and then goes from there. Yeah. The, the dam is broken. 
Yeah. Oh, and if uh, they ever want to call my number uh, or a number that's associated with me and I will be involved with anything, it's uh, 888-926-4174. So it's 888 888- 926-4174. 4174. Okay. Yeah. And then what happens is if they call, my team starts to take care of them. They notify me that somebody's called, and then I get involved. And if they go to any of our Florida, Florida facilities, I will most likely be there to greet them when they come in to get their treatment. That is awesome, man. That dude, uh definition to leave it better than you found it. And you're and you're just getting started. I mean, that's the great part. So, Thanks, brother. Uh, Marco Isom, I hope I said your name right. Good morning, Jason. Enjoy your clips as everyone does at the firehouses in Saginaw County. Still waiting you. You for you to visit Saginaw Township. So there you go. <laughs> Where is Saginaw Township? I, he, he did not. Uh, it's in Saginaw <laughs> County. I can tell you it's that It's in much. Saginaw County? All right. If I'm ever in Saginaw County, I will definitely stop by and say what's up. So absolutely with the state of the country and the COVID, I, I know it's crazy right now. And, uh, your videos and laughter, they bring so much needed, uh, laughter, the humor. I'm pretty sure. So I appreciate you very much for making them, uh, five questions for firefighters is a thing I do every, for every guest on the scrap and it has grown and it's a thing. And are you ready for your turn at the five questions for firefighters? <laughs> Let's go. All right. Number one, this is where it all started. It was originally the one question for firefighters, but the question was too negative. So I added the other four to, to bring light to it. Uh, number one is what is the number one issue facing the modern fire service? Um, I, I'd say uh, brotherhood cannibalism. Like number one thing that we're going through right now is uh, social media warriors or people that want to stand on their own brothers to make themselves look better. You know, oh, I, I've always I've always pictured it as, you know, we make fun of each other. That's just part of the game. You walk in, you know, you make fun of each other. It is what it yes. is. But if you and your team are killing it, man, it makes everybody look good. And if you always if you ever have the ability to, to take one for your brother or or be able to stand next to your brother and go, hey, he did such he did a great job just as well as I did. That's always going to that's always going to bring up the brotherhood and it's not going to cannibalize your own people. I love that term, brotherhood cannibalism. I haven't heard it, so I love it. Uh, Max points. I think I lost you. Right. Oh, you're back. No, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, number two, what is the thing you are most excited about for the future of firefighting? Uh, it's, technology is something that I'm super – I know we're, like, totally anti-technology and change. And <laughs> what, who, who says it? You know, the worst two, or two things firefighters hate is the way things are and change. Yes. You know, I forget, I forget who says that. I can't I can never remember his name. But um, <clears throat> he uh, – dude, some of the – like, I've seen some stuff that is super cool, man. Like, the whole, like, uh, heads-up display. Have you seen oh, this yeah. stuff in oh, our yeah. masks? Like, that's uh, – I, if they come out with that the year I'm retiring, I'm extending my career yeah. one year just so I can like, I mean, like that kind of stuff I'm super excited about. Uh, and I think with those types of things, it's going to make firefighter survivability so much higher. It's going to make patient survivability so much higher. And just in general, it's going to really improve the way that we do our jobs. No, it's space age stuff from like movies when we were kids and it's now it's like reality and it's like crazy. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, best rank or position to be in, in the fire service driver engineer all day. 100%. All day. percent. <laughs> no, no hesitation at all. <laughs> Driver engineer, man. You know, I, I enjoy. Uh, I actually enjoy EMS. I do. I, I make fun of it a lot. And I know sure. some people don't, but I like EMS captain would be cool. You know, you get to you, you go to all the cool calls stuff like that. But unfortunately, with that will always come the the uh, you got to babysit people that kind of stuff. So driver man, you 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 show up, bro. You pump a you pump a nice fire, man. You have a good time. You know, pack your hose up, and then that's it, dude. And I can say this: if you can't laugh at EMS, then you are not going to enjoy it. So no, that, that is one you of the major to. keys. Uh, yes, I, you have to. <laughs> yes, I'm calling an audible here because I want to ask you a, a different version of number three, which is what is the best ranker position to poke fun at uh, in in the fire service. Driver engineer. It's the same one. It's, uh, <laughs> I like the, the, the brake check guy. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so good, bro. I, you know, I love making yeah, every position is just so easy to make fun of because it, <laughs> it, like, it doesn't matter what department you're at. You walk in, it's the same variety of paramedics. Right on. You have the same, you know, you go to, the, it's the same variety of captains every single time. You got the guy that wants to micromanage everybody, you know, like, <laughs> uh, did you guys, cl- did you clean the dishes? Like, yeah, the dishes are clean. Well, did you clean, did you get the dust? Off the roof. Why would we get the dust off the roof? Right. Like, yes. You know, it's, it's always the same, man. So it, it, that's why I love it. Man. Just pick one and it's good to go. Driver engineer. All right. Number four yeah. best advice you have ever received? 
Uh, best advice was from my, my chief. Um, he was a captain at the time and I came to him and I said, Hey man, like w- this isn't okay. Like, why are, why are we doing this? Why aren't we do, you know, why, why don't we do this or, right. or so on and so forth? Like just complained. And he goes, you know, Jason, he goes, I want you to go back to your bunk room or go back to the table. And I want you to think of a solution because there are enough problem finders in the world and not enough solution nice. finders. I'm like, that's it, man. So now I try, if I, if I find something I don't like, I try to find a solution, at least one alternative. Then when I walk up, you know, it, it, it makes it a lot easier. You're at least being a part of the solution, not just a problem finder. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Final question. Heavy fire and tenable space. Would you rather be assigned to the nozzle or first in on VES? I like nozzle, man. I, I, there's just, there's just, there's something about like going in through the front door or whichever, uh, whatever side you're going in through, man, and and staring at that fire for you know half a second just to enjoy where you're at, but and then you know knocking it down, bro. Oh, yeah. I, I love that, dude. I love it. I mean, it, VES is fun. Um, and I love any kind of search and rescue stuff. I love doing that kind of stuff, but definitely it's just something about holding that nozzle. I think that brings you right back when you, when you grab that nozzle, it brings you right back to, to pro V school oh, yeah. or first the first year. time you got to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hell <man>. yes. Uh, <laughs> max points again, although I try not to, to show my bias to, towards the answers. All right. So, uh, <laughs> that's it. That's the five questions for firefighters. Uh, thank you, Jason, for taking those. Uh, best place to contact you uh, about speaking, ordering, anything you want to plug, hit me. Yeah. So uh, anyone that, if any speaking or anything, uh, anything they want to do, keynote speeches, any kind of mental health stuff I can speak on. Um, so you can Riviera Medic at yahoo.com or d- uh, direct to message me on any platform. I-, I get back to you on the one that checks all the messages. If you want coffee, it's uh, Google Fire Department Coffee or Fire D-E-P-T Coffee.com. If you use the code Jason, you'll get 15% off and uh, we'll send you some high quality coffee. Awesome, man. I'm going to order and some then- coffee today. Yeah, and then Bandy Treatment Centers for any kind of mental health stuff, and we got you. That is awesome. All right. With that, we're drawing to a close on Weekly Scrap number 49. Coming up uh, next week, uh, this weekend, actually, we got Chief Dennis Riley going to be on this Saturday. Next week, Gary Lane and Lars Axelson. So it's it's an exciting September heading into October. Um, Other than that, uh, thank you guys for the questions and comments today. Thank you, Jason, for being a, I don't think I've smiled and laughed this much through a scrap. So I, it's Good, a, man. that's, that's crazy. The effect you have. And, uh, thank you for being an unbelievably good guest on weekly scrap number 49. Thank you, brother. For everybody watching, I hope the tone stays silent unless it's burning. Stay safe out there.